Welcome to Theatre Reviews with Paul Seven. I'm here at the Duke of York's to see Sheridan Smith in Shirley Valentine. You know those magazine features where people are asked who they would invite to dinner? Well, Sheridan Smith has gone right to the top of my list. She may only have been acting out Willie Russell's excellent script, but her powerhouse performance in Shirley Valentine shows what a superb entertainer she is. From the very start, she has the audience in the palm of her hand as she tells hilarious anecdotes and delivers perfectly timed punchlines. Keep watching and I'll tell you more about this revival of Willie Russell's one-woman play and why Sheridan Smith is the one woman to do it. Shirley Valentine is one of a triumvirate of plays, along with Educating Rita and Blood Brothers, that were written in the 1980s by Willie Russell and established him as one of the great playwrights of his generation. All feature Liverpudlians, they're all funny, they all have natural flowing dialogue, and they all show deep understanding of what it is to be human. And I'd like to add that, for me, his reputation doesn't rest solely on those three plays. I saw his 1974 play, John Paul, George, Ringo and Bert, and found it an excellent musical about the rise and fall of the Beatles. Sadly, it's never been revived because apparently Paul didn't like it and withdrew the rights to use the music. Anyway, back to Shirley Valentine. It's the story of a woman trapped in a humdrum life with grown-up children and a loveless marriage to an unappreciative, domineering man. We first meet her in her kitchen. Now, there's a challenge in producing an intimate play for one person on a large stage, but set designer Paul Wills has been very clever. He compensates for the height and depth of the Duke of York's stage by adding an upstairs layer to the three walls of the kitchen, which uh, sketches a monochrome bedroom and bathroom level. The three walls make no pretense to be a contained room. In fact, they clearly take advantage of the space they're trying to fill by using the gaps to suggest a brighter world beyond. And there's no danger of this one-woman show being static. Director Matthew Dunster keeps Sheridan Smith moving about the floor. At one point, she actually cooks chips and eggs while continuing to talk to us. Great acting indeed, and so much better than a plate of fake food. Funnily enough, I'd seen some on-stage cooking in A Little Life a few days earlier, although that was not the central activity. And I remember Bill Nye cooking an omelette uh, during Skylight. Um, maybe it's the ultimate test for an actor. Can you act and cook at the same time? Shirley tells us about her life using the concept of talking to the wall but actually removing the fourth wall altogether to talk directly to the audience. She uses a treasure chest of acting skills. She talks as if she's sharing her confidence with friends. She speaks clearly, but without ever seeming to raise her voice. She smiles sweetly at us, gives us a sly glance, pauses for us to fill in in our minds what she is about to say. Her rapport with her audience is something to behold, and indeed be part of. Shirley knows that she's reached middle age unfulfilled, but she accepts her submissive role in life and sees no prospect of escaping it. It's not that she's without insight or dreams or the thought of rebellion. I have allowed myself to lead this little life, she says, when inside me there was so much more. Her main problem is that she lacks confidence, thanks to the way in which confidence is sucked out of so many working-class kids and replaced with timidity. Her many amusing stories about her life at school and the subsequent uh, much better fates of her friends only underline the emptiness of her repetitive, servile life in which dinner must be on the table each evening as her husband walks through the door. Then she's presented with the opportunity to go with a friend to Greece. At first it's more of a fantasy than something she'd really do, but events push her into leaving her doormat life for sand, sea and taramasalata. After the interval, we spend a short but intense time with Shirley in Greece. The stage is now wide open with a blue Mediterranean sky as a backdrop. She tells us, and a rock, what has happened. 
Her descriptions of a philandering bar owner, jingoistic English tourists and her own liberation make this a highly entertaining and satisfying final act. Sheridan Smith took the curtain call like someone genuinely happy to have shared the evening with us, nodding, smiling, pointing, and judging by the loud and long applause, the feeling was mutual. I give Shirley Valentine, starring Sheridan Smith, five stars. I hope you enjoyed this uh, review and found it useful. If you did, please like comment and subscribe so you'll be the first to know about future reviews. You can read my reviews at theatre.reviews and you can follow me on Twitter, Mastodon, Instagram and Facebook. Thank you for watching.